boy, Rosso, where's the spontaneity uh, in that? Wait 30 seconds, you got to record this. It's, it's all right. right. It's running now. Yeah, so, I'll crop it out. So where we are, we're, we're running uh, pretty much every part of the system as expected. We're running PBAS chains. We're, we, you know, so if I know that some people are watching the commits go by and maybe somebody saw a commit go by about coordinating notarizations through the mempool. And, uh, you know, like one of the really cool things that um, is working well is that so you've, you've got this mining cross chains and I think we're going to be able to get rid of the notaries actually maybe by the next release after the first one, even as, as an option. Um, but basically you're, you're, you've got these two chains and they've got this process where um, you've got multiple notaries and each, each chain, each PBAS chain right now can define its notaries. And the, um, you know, the model, like when we finally release uh, mainnet, the question, you know, I think we talked about it. Basically, as long as that is the model, I think that it's better for the overall ecosystem to have a higher price for launching. And then, and then we would expect that to go down and you really don't need um, any explicit notaries at all and and so what happens is there's a there's a way of signing and this actually is really interesting because it can apply not just to notarizations for chains it can actually apply to anything in applications over time and so it's like um it's like a different kind of multi-sig for confirming things that could be expanded to be confirmation of vote tallies or anything really right now it's being used for this notarization. And so you've got this, you know, M of N, like say 13 of 25 um, notaries must uh, confirm in order for something to be considered final and confirmed as that is the, that is that other chain that the miners say it is. Um, and and uh, if you if you're a notary, the way that it works is you just run the wallet. Like you literally, there's no server to run. There's no other system. There's no backend notary network. You know, you run the wallet and you set notary ID equals actually any ID in your wallet, and it will figure out what notary IDs you have that are valid that can be used to notarize what chains as your merge mining or merge staking. And so what happens is um, you will see that according to the protocol, there is a valid notarization and there are a number of things in the protocol that make that happen only once every n blocks and and we can set that right now it's set to 10 so like every 10 blocks there will be a valid notarization but then it needs to be confirmed by the notary so the the miner is going to put in this valid notarization no miner once there's a valid notarization would have any motivation to put in another one in that same 10 block period um and then another miner, so the the notary must wait 15 blocks after the um, block is there in order to sign their confirmation. So that's that's a number. Like it could be a little longer, it could be a little shorter. But the point is to let the blockchain ensure that the blockchain is stabilized for you know 15 blocks before the notaries are saying, "Yep, that's absolutely the correct one." So that by that time, another miner has a chance to confirm that notarization and put in another one for the future. And then the notaries have the right to sign. And there are, say, 25 notaries, and they all want to be the ones who have signed that if it is correct. But there are 13. And so um, 
the notaries, they don't know, they don't have to know the other notaries. They don't have to care about the other notaries. They simply are there to be, um, you know, witnesses effectively to the fact that this is in fact the right chain. And so a notary signs and posts their signature as a transaction that goes into the mempool. And a notary comes along and they want to sign and they actually look, they look in the mempool, they look on the blockchain and they look and see how many signatures there are that they could combine to finalize if there are 13. If no, they sign their notarization and they post it. And then finally, when there are 13, they roll it up, they um, sign it, they finalize it, and now this finalized notarization that was finalized on the PBAS chain can be um, packaged up as one transaction with all of the signatures that were sent on the blockchain before for this notarization. It can be combined. They're not tied to the transactions. And then submitted to the other blockchain as a final notarization that matches both chains. And all of that's actually working really well. Except <laughs> when, so we were running this yesterday and, and we're notarizing back and forth with the multi-notaries and it's all just going along. And then every once in a while, we'd hit the spot where like it would go for a while um, without being notarized. And you would see that there are a number of non-finalized you know, notarizations growing by the miners. So what I'm so there's an issue there, which I don't you know, I want to I want to get it resolved before we roll out the test net, um, you know, because I believe what's happening is, I think what's happening is that all the notarizations are getting posted. And if the person, because what we've noticed is that the notarizations don't always get propagated to all the nodes and all the mempools. And so if there are enough notarizations to notarize and a notary signs and doesn't notarize, and it seems like what might be happening is until the next notarization comes along that goes through that process, if they were all signed and nobody recognized that, you know, there was enough to finalize when they were signing, then it seems maybe nobody goes back and collects them all and finalizes and submits. I think that's what might be going on there. So that's a little detail, but I'm trying to kind of get across through going into that detail level of where things are right now on the network um and there's some of the complete cross-chain sending that we want to finish after this is resolved so everything else like launches are working refunds are working um the cross-chain transactions are working all the math on all the conversions in the defi is working this notarization protocol is kind of, it's just kind of beautiful to watch it working. And when I say, you know, when I kind of explain what isn't working, all the rest of it is, and it's really kind of like we had auto notarization before and we were doing it with the cryptographic notarization. Actually, I have to say, after going through all of this and seeing this new kind of you know, auto notarization with notaries where each chain can be responsible for their own um, state like that. Uh, now, after going through all this, um, you know, it isn't, it isn't that I am absolutely positive that it isn't hard from where we are right now to provably correct auto notarization without explicit notaries and the system we have enables that will enable that but um, we're not going to do it before this release because there's we're not going to do any significant thing before this release and so right now we're 
you know, we're getting these details resolved. Uh, Chris I, uh, Monkins, I see you're on, and and I don't know if you've tried out the latest, but you know, if you're not doing, even if you're doing multi-notary auto notarizations, um, they all should be working for you. I know you're you're looking at the Ethbridge stuff. So, um, anyways, that's where we are, and and it's been, you know, as we get closer and closer to the release, I. I just want people to understand someone had made a comment on the main uh, general channel, which, you know, I try not to let things bother me, but it kind of bothered me because it was referring to some, some reference about honesty. And I have to say there has never been a project in my life that has been, that I have been at the point where we were near, you know, the release of this system um, where I have been unable to know the exact time it's ready. There's just never been. And the truth is that um, as I mentioned on the PBAS channel and, you know, recently um, the ID system and the VDXF, which we use for enabling all of this stuff and really the, the, naming system and what it enables. And I, and I know some people on this call have played enough with it to understand what I'm talking about. The decision to do that first, it, it moved everything out significantly. You know, we could have had a, a cross chain system that was running with PBAS chains some time ago, but it would have been nothing as capable as what this is. And this level of complexity, I truly believe, I don't believe it can be solved without this kind of a system. I don't believe it. And, and uh, the decision to not release the DeFi system that is on testnet now, that is not multi-chain, but that's continued to work, just continued to work. And that could have been hardened as it was on testnet, you know, similar to what it was on testnet without without saying let's do the PBAS and, and let's blend it with the Ethereum bridge protocol. It was hard. It was, you know, it was, it's been hard, but it was absolutely the right decision. I'm convinced. Um, because we now have an API that is a bridge API. And when Chris and other people working on the, um, on the protocol plug in, you know, we, we finish the few, there's not a whole lot on, you know, in the demon left for the ETH bridge really. And when we finish that stuff, I don't think that any project or any blockchain that has decently capable developers will have a difficult time bridging. And when someone bridges to Varus, once this is done, they effectively will bridge to every other system that Varus has bridged to already. And all of the DeFi will be in the middle of that bridge. So um, I think the decisions have been, you know, I'm tired right now, actually. Um, just because, you know, we want to get this done every day. We want to get this done. And a lot of us are pushing, pushing really hard to do this. And, you know, there's, I'm sure, um, it's I'm not sure, but I believe it's possible probably to get it done by tomorrow just because of how tired I am today, but maybe today. And I've been saying this, and I'm sorry for being wrong, but it's not because I uh, didn't believe it every time I was saying it. And things are, there's so much of the system that's working so beautifully that you know, if we release it now and it goes like I don't dig in and figure out and address this thing that I think is going on, you know, we watched it notarizing with multi notaries and multiple chains and all of the notaries were, were and then every once in a while you get this long period and it looks like, is it going to catch up? And then boom, it's fixed and it automatically is back. But I don't want any of those periods because if we're running on a worldwide test net, you know, I'd rather that it doesn't just stop 
connecting between the chains and then we have to go and and reset and i don't know for sure yet until i fix this that you know i just want to believe that when we get testnet out it's just going to run as well as the current testnet for as long uh, like until after we release even i'm not saying that we won't make another change because i believe there will be another but so that's where things are that's why i can't say exactly the date and uh and you know i have no less belief in everything that we're doing than i did before and there was never like some state where it's like oh no something is going to be you know some problem it's not it's just in a process and we're doing something that i think is extremely important and has never been done and we're talking about a system that you know will enable everyone to participate in the system in the way that i think crypto originally intended in a way that's going to allow everyone in the world all of us together to make a financial system like nobody's ever seen i think that's what i think and and that is not trying to hype or sell um i'm just trying to say that you know in spite of the um inability to predict the exact day i don't think in the long run we're probably going to look back and it's probably not going to you know going to make a big difference in the long run but as much as anyone in the entire community we definitely want to get this done this phase done so that's where it is how hard are we pushing on to yeah we're 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 pounding on it in at different i mean basically what we're doing right now is it's not about hardening right now it's about getting all i mean there is hardening it okay let me explain the design of everything now is inherently hardenable but there are places right now where you say all right this needs to be absolutely correct and before you have finalized all of those things you don't want another validation function there saying oh you changed that and now i'm going to complain and so you have to like constantly go and change you know both sides of everything and so the hardening that remains is more yes there's going to be some stress testing um because it's going to be running on many nodes we're going to want to cause forking we're going to want to do you know um things that are harder to do with just lot you know machines and trying to pound it with lots of pre-conversions and launches and you know long launches and and lots of conversions that fill up you know this kind of thing that is not we we'll do some of that but that's not the focus right now the focus right now is really making sure that every single aspect of the protocol is exactly what <clears throat> what it should be to enable fundamental design to be correct and you know it's not just a bunch of stuff thrown together and chains that talk to each other it is a very detailed protocol that actually needs to be very well documented once this is all done but inherently is cryptographically hard provable end to end and and so um you know the micro test it's not it's only a micro test net because doing the things that you're talking about like opening it up let, let me give an example of a bug a recent well not a bug actually a recent problem someone was working on testing cross chain sends but you know in order to test cross chain sends you need to know how to enter the parameters so basically a cross chain send in, you know if if you've ever used the send currency command and you've converted currencies it's like you 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 know it, it looks like z send many you do a send currency you say who it's from you can specify wild cards wild cards that are all r addresses wild cards that are all identities 
um, or you know, the Z address as your source. And then you have an array of destinations and then the system figures out how to get all the funds from your wallet to make that send. And so in the array of destinations, you say, you know, address, and you can put an I address, you can put an I address colon private, you can put a Z address, you can put an R address, you know, you put an address and then you have comma amount and you put an amount and then that's kind of the basics. And then you can put like convert to, and then you convert using a converter. And if the converter is easy to determine implicitly by the system, that's enough. It will convert to another currency and you can send it to yourself and convert it to another currency. If you want to send across chain, you use export to, and you just specify the chain it's going to. And you can still do all, everything else is the same. And so, you know, the problem is we want to make it so that if you use export to, that all the conditions can actually work. And so here's an example. I start a PBAS chain and the PBAS chain has a bridge converter, which is another currency that I also launch or that I don't launch it. It launches on the blockchain. And it can have all of the participation and it can include other currencies. It is, I think E. Juliano was asking about, um, you know, what is the uh, bridge currency? Well, I didn't, I didn't have time to really explain in writing. So if anybody wants, the bridge currency is just another fractional currency. And it happens to be um, enforced that it will be able to convert also between a launch chain or system and the um, PBAS chain, it will be able to have those two native currencies in it, but it can have others and it can be a partial fractional currency and it can have a pre-allocation. It can have a, you know, carve out. It can have all these different things. And it's just a fractional currency that by default happens to live on the PBAS chain. So if I start a PBAS chain called value, and I start a fractional currency called bridge.value as, as its bridge converter, then um, if, I can, if I'm running on the Varus chain and I say um, send you know, an address to myself or some address, um, amount, some amount in Varus, and then I say... Um, convert to bridge.value because remember names and identities on this new chain will be name.value okay and they are and that all works great too by the way um if i want to send if i want to convert using bridge.value and i just say convert to the system knows what i'm want to what i'm saying we don't want to automatically export that currency off of the Varus chain unless you explicitly say export to because maybe some newbie could make a mistake, try to use a converter that's off chain. We don't want to go exporting their funds off to another chain that isn't one they're running on right now. And so, for example, to convert through the bridge currency from Varus, you need to have an export to of bridge.value as well as a convert to of bridge.value or otherwise that will fail because it would be an implicit export and we don't want to allow those. And so there was somebody testing cross-chain sends and they had a problem testing because they didn't know all of the rules of how to enter the command. And so that's kind of like right now before we release and oh and I didn't actually tell you the reason why that relates to your question. So the problem is that I didn't have the parameter validation in place that would refuse what they did enter which then created a bad transaction 
which didn't have the validation to prevent that bad transaction from going into the blockchain. Because that's part of the, you know, once we have all this final on the front end, there's a hardening step, which is to take all the validation and stick it on the, like it's a, a lot of it's there, but not all of it's there and put it on other side. So it will just never be allowed to go in. And so, you know, there's a certain amount of making sure that enough of that is in place so that when we release it or the worldwide public, because remember, everyone who downloads a wallet is able to connect to testnet. And the reason that we try to make like, you know, we don't want those coins to ever be worth something. That would not be a good thing, you know, and and resetting testnet and the fact that it can be reset, you know, hopefully helps to make sure that that's the case. Because it can be. And and so when we release it worldwide as testnet, we want to make sure that people won't just make these random mistakes that can get something into the blockchain that it's not really a matter of a problem because we we know that that code that validates it on the front end needs to be moved to the other piece. It's more that, um, you know, it's that's the... That's the issue of just releasing it worldwide. On t- it needs to. We need to believe that it can run for all normal use. We need to believe that it can run without people creating a lot of noise because not everybody knows what is an actual issue that needs to be addressed and fixed. And not everybody knows that they don't know. And so when and i'm not trying to you know if we release something that people have a lot of problems with but it's because they're you know it's like yeah yeah don't do that because you know you're not supposed to do that yet you don't want to be in that state we'd rather say you know everything that any normal user will do should be fine and it's the hackers who might be able to get in and cause a problem and you know what um, if you're really going to dig deep and try to hack and break test net, you know, uh, probably not good. You, you know, do it in a way where you think that there is a problem on main net that you're trying to investigate, um, because that can be really useful. But if you're trying to just, you know, figure out how to get around something in the newest protocol that, that doesn't have its, um, it's back end validation in place yet. You're probably not doing anyone any favors, including yourself. You know what I mean? So that, so Bishop, I, I don't know if that um, is, you know, I know it's long winded, but the basic idea is that yes, we are doing uh, testing for large activity and volume at times, but it, the focus right now is just to get this to test net in a way where the protocol is correct. It's the protocol we believe will be on mainnet. It's exactly that protocol. The implementation is correct. And there won't be a lot of noise generated when any number of people worldwide just use it so that we'll be able to really dig into the real issues that come up that we need to improve or solve before mainnet. Could, could you uh, highlight to people the uh, the size of this project? Obviously, the how big it is compared to the other projects you've done, because that surprised me the other day. Oh, what what I told I don't. But Chris, remember I told you because like I don't want that to be. It's recorded, and I, people will think I'm hyping or something. <laughs> no, I'm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I. I, I, I I, uh, you know, it's big. (laughs) It's as big as anything that I've done before. That's, you know, in terms of, it's okay to be a hype beast every now and then. I'm not, I'm not, no, it's not okay from my perspective. I'm not, I, it's my challenge actually is I believe in this. And my challenge is to make sure that, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, um, I don't want to convince anybody to do anything that they wouldn't do. I want them to just see 
that it's the right thing to do whenever they come around to seeing that, you know, because um, I think that's kind of the right way to do it. That's just my perspective. So I'd rather just any, I don't, I don't want to uh, try to convince people as much as I just want to make it work the way that it can so that everybody can see it. And then nobody has to convince anybody. Well said. So, oh, Chris, I'm I'm sorry if I didn't answer that the way you wanted. No, I understand your point of view. It's, it's me getting excited, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited too. <laughs> Thank you. If anyone else has other questions, I'm happy to answer any, or I could just listen to stuff too. I think, I don't know if, I'm going to go back to coding after we're done here, so. Yeah. Bishop uh, has a question in marketing. Yeah, so that's actually, I don't think that that's as hard a question as it might seem because the challenge isn't how do you get something that's done and working, you know, hardened and in place and ready to go as much. That's that's something that's more known. It was really the, this is a, this is, you know, again, it kind of goes back to what Chris was I don't know of any system that does what this does. There is this, there's so many like this. The, I don't want to be hyperbolic. Um, it was the unknowable unknown that was the hardest part about the finish line. And it's about not the hardening. That's not the, the issue. It's the, you know, the, Everything was mostly written, and then we worked to have it all functioning and making sure that everything we got through everything and it, you know, and and the scope and the scale of what everything um, is, uh, you know, I think maybe Chris's question relates to the fact that now that it's really mostly behind in terms of creation of it um it's like you turn around and you look at at this creation and it's just kind of you know i i don't it's not an ego thing it's more like it's just kind of boggling you know it's uh what it's able to do and um and in the process of the finish line there, you know, it's, it was, the whole thing was, um, bigger and possible because of the systems that we built already underneath and everything just kind of fits hand in glove in that sense. Um, and because it all fits and because it was all kind of conceived of, and now we're at this point where there are pieces that weren't originally conceived of, but are now there in ways that, you know, maybe we didn't even expect would be possible at the time. Um, that was what made it so, but still, I mean, it's not on testnet yet. So maybe I'm just speaking right now and I'm going to hit, you know, three more days. I don't know. I mean, I, when I say that, it scares me because of like I'm, I've got PTSD from this process or something because of just prediction. Um, but I, I'm, I'm not I'm not upset about it really. I just more I wish that I was more accurate. Um, and so no, I honestly don't believe, but I don't know that 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 means something. But I honestly don't believe. A test net is going to have these unknowns, actually, because I think everything should be pretty much known. Um, how, how much of uh, the zero? The, the, the next then? question is zero.
I'm sorry, Chris, what? But how much of the complexity of the project comes from the bit, the fact that it's just the design of the fairness was such an important part of it, as in the fee fairness structure and the, you know. You know, I look at any other system that would, like if I could think of any system, like you take, what does this do? You know, and you look at any system that has pieces that does what this does, because there isn't any system that does what this does. But you look at any system that has different pieces that does what this does, and um, it's already more complex and built with much less kind of... Uh, intentional design through the whole thing and so the complexity i think is inherent it's kind of like an auto one of the things that i used to talk about when we were doing net because at microsoft when we were doing net um when i was starting that project i don't know if people realize this there was massive resistance massive resistance i mean like I was, I might, I was late. I, I was actually labeled a term um, that was, you know, like I was going to destroy all of the things that many people cared about because I, I was, you know, espousing this system that's going to put all of the complexity in the hands of the developers making the system, and they were saying it's it's too complex to have a virtual machine at all like this, you know let alone in a system that does multiple languages and blah, 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 blah. And, um, and I, you know, I had to prove Microsoft actually flew out um, members of their technical advisory board, professors and different to come out. And I had to convince them that what we were going to do was, was even possible before they would sign off on giving me a budget to do it. And, um, you know, the complexity I used to describe as like an automatic transmission. You know, it's really simple when you're using it. And that's kind of, that's how this is designed. But there's a lot of complexity inside, you know, to make it work. And I think if you want a system that makes it possible, to um, if you want a system that makes it possible to take any currency and send it to any other currency, to launch your currency with Kickstarter features, to launch a blockchain, to have unlimited blockchain scale, how many people are working? And I'm not saying that lightly. This is a fractal system. The first release is going to allow you to make PBAS chains from Barris. The next release after that, like, you'll be able to just have fractal PBAS growth so that Pretty much there is not a scale limit. There just is not. And, you know, have all of these things in a system that allows a CLI user, not just a GUI user, where everything's being hidden, a CLI user to be able to say, send currency from, you know, my name to this other name and export it to this other chain that they like to use or that's their country's favorite chain or whatever. You know, I mean... Uh, that's just inherently hard. And I, I would actually kind of turn that question around and say, it's easy enough to do that we can do it. And we The ID system and the VDXF has made this incredibly complex landscape so that we can support connectivity to every single currency in the world, to every single blockchain in the world. It's built into this API. The, the identity system, most people don't know this. You know, people are out there building different identity systems. The identity protocol is actually not very specific. It could be used on any other system. The only reason that we, like the only thing we really did when considering what should we do, like we invented this, right? But it's actually an open protocol that the whole world can use. And it's only just NIH reasons that people aren't figuring out how to put it into their chains already. 
And the fact is that because there isn't something that I know of that's as good. As, I mean, I look, I, okay, maybe I don't know everything, but I don't know of something that is as good as it. And it's been out for a while. And, you know, all bits is not a developer. And yet, you know, he's just done a little bit enough to, you know, Rick roll the community with a, you know, with a, um, an ID. And it's like, you know, any entrepreneur could come and make a social, a decentralized social network using this. But we got to finish this other thing before we're going to be out there like, evangelizing to everybody that that's what they should do because, you know, we're busy right now. But it'll be soon. And so the, I think that the thing is more, how were we able to tame the inherent complexity of solving these things because we are, that's kind of crazy. And we are. Um, so I don't know. That's how I would look at it because I think the fear, the fairness and the fee model, you see these, these are not, it's not like we tried to make a complex fee model. It's that if you want to make a system that doesn't force someone to be a millionaire and put up their million dollars so that they can just stake. I mean, come on, you know, or, or lock up their, their currency for the two week period so that they can be part of staking on your network. It's like, really, you know, let them just have their currency in their wallet and let them help, you know, and let them make money on it. If they have one coin and they happen to get super, super lucky, they can make, you know, money on that too. And, and, and I, that's decentralized making people have to put up a million dollar bond or get all their currency slashed because they aren't online at this moment. You know, it's just, I just, it's just so unnecessary and so complex. It's way more complex than fee models that make everything fair. And so the fee model was really just how do you make it so that all of these self-interested people worldwide will work together to make this whole system really function in a secure manner that covers everything you need? And, and that's why the fee model is what it is. And the way that we can make it work, yeah, it was hard, <laughs> you know, but it was necessary. Um, and, and all the math is looking very beautiful right now. Yes, Bishop, it's safe to assume those things. Thank you. I'll just wait and see if anyone has other questions or so, because that's kind of my, that's my answer to that. And I, I understand why it looks like that when you're looking in the code and that definitely uh, did make certain things, um, you know, challenging and, and there are going to be, you know, getting that right was challenging. Oh, NFTs, um, Lynn. Yeah. So, um, Okay, so I'm going to have a view, you know, everybody likes to jump on the big thing that's growing. I'm not saying the NFTs are nothing. They're not nothing, okay? <laughs> IDs are actually, IDs are NFTs. I'm sorry, they're just NFTs. It's just that we don't want to call them NFTs because they're so much more. Like an ID that issues a currency and posts a contract as part of that. I have a problem with NFTs right now because somebody decided to name, it's like a giant marketing thing. And I feel, and, and like some, someone uh, um, mentioned to me recently that, you know, uh, some guy just made an NFT of his genome. Okay, great. So somebody's going to buy this, you know, a hundred thousand dollars who knows how much they're gonna but, okay so 23andme has all of our genomes 
uh, I mean, all of our, you know, actual, like the whole sequence and, and uh, all the ones who did it. And, you know, we paid them to, to take it. Um, and I don't know what rights, but what legal rights does this person have to their genome? What legal rights do they give to the person who has the NFT that claims that they have their genome? Do they own that person? Do they own all the babies of that? I mean, it's like the the whole point, the whole point is that um, NFTs are not they're contracts that are just executed on the blockchain and they are a way for people to issue a kind of currency that, you know, like the, the ability to do some automated contract things, like if you transfer it, someone might get a royalty, these things. That's kind of interesting. But everything about an NFT really is, um, is uh, it's by law. It's like, it's all just contract and contract law except for just limited issuance of tokens. And that wasn't blockchain. I mean, you can't enforce NFT rights on the blockchain. You can only record them. And so honestly, I think that, uh, I think Verus ID is like much is, we're not marketing it yet. We're not marketing it yet as that. I don't think it would be a good thing to do. Because the, you know there are fe some features in NFTs that are useful. That's why I was. That's actually what I was hoping to get was just a nice little conversation on the identity channel at some point about what at a high level, not how do we implement stuff. There's not a problem with how do we implement stuff. The real question is um, how do we like what are the things that really would define what we think an NFT should be? Because the way that it's defined right now is just a a big ball of band-aids that you know I, I just i think nft is like tulips and DeFi is real and DeFi is way overpriced and it's got minor extracted value and all this stuff and nfts are just a like a hint it's like it's like nfts are so early it's a hint of what will come there will be something like nfts they might even they might not call them NFT. They might be I. They, they might be just something like, you know, artist chains. They might be like uh, artist current. I don't know what they're going to be, but I think NFT is a giant e effective marketing phenomenon, mostly driven out of the Ethereum community, and uh, and I think that we will have. We'll probably say this is our solution for NFTs, and it'll probably be related to to uh, you know using IDs in a certain way with guidelines and how you do it. And uh, and maybe we'll add some features, um, but I just right now, you know, I don't think is where we should be spending a bunch of energy. Certainly, until we get all of this stuff out to mainnet, or at least on its you know on its way to mainnet, because I think we have all of the things that are valuable in what an NFT is in IDs. I'd be happy to hear that actually uh that would you could ping me anytime um i can't promise you know the, the time to respond but if there's something about a, con a proof of concept idea um it, are you saying a way that a chain should launch or is it an idea of a chain that you would like to launch because if it's the latter then yeah you might wait a little bit until we get the test net okay you might wait till just test nets out. We could talk about that and maybe try it out on test net. Um, Lohan, this is a community. Here's the thing. I'm never going to do a marketing campaign. I'm not going to do a market. I'm, I'm the dev. I'm the lead dev. So there will be companies I know will do marketing campaigns and the community I know will have more material and I will do what Bishop was saying, who is, you know, which is I will spend time with people who want to do more marketing and I will get like I will work on helping people understand how to do things. I will work with people who are writing documentation and write some myself. I'll write articles. You know, I I don't want to make promises of all the things I'm going to spend my time on because I'm. What I'm saying is that um, 
it's not once we go live on mainnet i do think there's something that people don't a lot of people don't understand i think and now i know that there are people who do but this is what i believe once we go live on mainnet i don't think speculation will actually set our price anymore i don't think the speculation will have a large impact on our price anymore um because i think our price will be driven by the volume of usage on the platform and it will be a natural effect of that usage so you know i think that the community marketing will be the, the community has done a really great job and rozo and and Santos recently and you know people who have been pitching in and 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 all the like you know the voiceover work and the you know the writing of articles by Maisie and all bits writing stuff and even just trying things out and using testnet and 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 showing people that look I I can use an ID and I can actually make it you know somebody who really wanted to could make an ID a profile today and every ID like they could use IDs for authentication and and profiles for their own social network. And they literally have to build like way less code than anyone building a new Facebook would have to build, you know, and it's a community. And, and what's really going to happen, I believe is after mainnet, the community is going to finally realize that they are the power, like they are the community. And, um, and I'll be part of that, but not, I will start a marketing campaign. And now you might not have meant that, you might have meant you as in feeling separate from the you that is, you know, some mythical team of people, but we're all in the community. So everybody who's on this call obviously is spending their time in some way, you know, to be part of the community. So thanks for that too. You too. So I got a question. Um, will we ever have our own uh, crypto conditions on PBAS change? Would that be possible? I, we don't use crypto conditions. So do you mean smart transactions? Yeah, yeah, like some kind of conditions through uh, transactions that, that, that you place, then you do a transaction this happens or that happens in a way okay so there are a few things one is the programming model okay um so you could you know a pbas chain will be always an optional fork meaning that a pbas chain will use the Veris daemon, but the main thing that will make it continue to function, and this is actually something that JL777 told me at the very, very beginning, before we launched Veris, he said, you know, because I wanted to do quite a bit of different things. I wanted us to do quite a bit of different technology on the chain, as you can see now, it's different. And, uh, and he said, you know, as long as you are compatible with notarization protocol, you can diverge wildly from any common functionality on the chain. And, you know, the same can be said for any PBAS chain, really exactly the same. There's a protocol 
And there will be, I believe there will be projects that will take the demon and they will say, you know, we want to put in these new capabilities. And if they put in, if a, if a group wants to put in like amazing new capabilities, then we'd want them back into the main demon. We'd want to do this as a cooperative community. If you want to just have like conditions, it really so much, like if you're not a developer and you think you need crypto conditions because you want to make an app, you may not need any, anything like that at all. You may not need those at all because it may be just the wrong way to make the app you want to make. And what you really want to know is um, what you want to do, what are the kinds of condition, conditional you know, application level functions you want that are different from what people are doing. Like you could literally make an entire social network using various identities today that would have massive functionality and you wouldn't need any more programming capability and you would be leveraging the blockchain and it would be a decent, you know, you could make it as decentralized app and all these other things. So the, the question, is there going to be crypto conditions? The only reason to ask that question is if you really are a developer wanting to do that. If you're saying, will there be a way to make apps? The answer is yes. If you're saying, Will there be a way to make smart transaction logic? Okay. Meaning I want to design a new way that the blockchain works with something, you know, like, will there be a VM on, on smart transactions or something like that? Um, I believe that at first there will be smart transactions that will allow you to compose because there already are like this thing i talked about with uh, you, you remember blockchain is really the, the the benefit of blockchain is the decentralization more than anything else and so the ability to um use this notary protocol for any kind of uh any kind of you know, functionality where you have consensus that isn't blockchain consensus, but it's all of, you know, you could have like a hierarchically rolled up notarization to cover any size population, really. I mean, it, it, it leads right into the vision paper. This mo and, and this will be functionality that, you know, if someone is doing a project and they say, what I'd really like to do is I'd like to have, you know, ratings and people do this and that, and if it isn't done yet, and it might be the kind of thing we just put into the smart transactions for everybody. If someone says, I want something that, you know, nobody else is going to really need, I want it in mind, or I want to build stuff that's proprietary. It's like, okay, fine. Go build your proprietary stuff and you can form. If I do believe all this being said, where I sound like the guy who doesn't, you know, um, believe in, look, .NET was, uh, has a virtual machine at its core, you know. Um, I believe that the model, and I'm not focused on this right now, but I believe that a model where smart transactions, smart transaction outputs can have provably correct general logic that can be added, not a script language. Well, it is kind of like a script, like, but it's not Bitcoin script and it's um, not Ethereum you know, solidity or something like that. Um, I have in mind what it might be, and I don't want to say because uh, there's discussions that need to happen. And before, of course, it's done, I obviously would, we would talk about it. But um, I believe that in the long, and, and it's not something I see as, you know, before mainnet on this or even as a priority for the next release, unless people building applications say, this is going to be an application that I could build with this and that I would not uh, be able to build without. That'll always be important. Um, so I don't know if that answered the question. That is my attempt. Um, yeah, thanks. I will probably talk to you way when mainnet's ready. Or no, when testnet's ready, you can we can talk. Um, our space when, yeah, I mean, well, it's it's the yeah, it's the most important project I think I've ever worked on. Let's say that. Uh, next plans 
okay, I don't know. It's a Tinder, I don't know. Right, right now, I just want to get this. That's my, I, I am purposefully trying to focus on that. Yeah, because we just talked about some of them. But yeah, there's, you know, right now, I just want to focus on getting this to test net and then to main net. And uh, Foom, no, I, I honestly, at this point, I'm starting to believe that there's really no reason to drop the price of an ID um, because I think that, uh, you know, unless Varus goes absolutely through the roof, which I wouldn't say it has yet, um, I don't even think it's a barrier for people to get started on the Varus blockchain. And I'm pretty positive that... Uh, that when, um, you know, once we release PBAS, there will be less expensive ways to get IDs. You just won't be able to get the one with the at sign at the end unless you pay a little more, but everything you pay goes right back into the network. And I know it will be used to make the whole system better for everybody. So, you know, there will be people obviously who are, mining and staking and making money in every part of the world but that's also good so um yeah i don't really i don't see a big reason for dropping the price of ids ah uh, um we should yeah lynn on the private only thing what i really mean is that you'd basically have the accessibility to that uh, behind fire, you could have you could have uh, internal private blockchains behind firewalls that other people wouldn't even be able to, you know, get nodes onto, and you could do things with IDs. Some of the things I would expect people to do, which I don't really want to focus on, is to leverage IDs as ways of providing exclusivity. You know, um, like you could you could even make chains that. Uh, there are there's so many different options now that getting a private only oh private only I'm sorry I misunderstood your comment you mean a Z transaction only ah yeah I I just don't see if we if if there was a yeah so it's basically a decision um there's nothing you could make a private only chain that would be able to uh oh don't do any spoilers bishop you you could make a a private only chain that would be able to um participate in all of the cross chain stuff and everything else but you could make a rule that it didn't have the ability to run um currencies multi-currency or um you know, or uh, DeFi, you could just decide that you wanted private only except for other currencies so that the native currency was just only private. Um, you know, it's kind of, that's the thing. You could, you could go anywhere from whatever level of limit you want. You know, we've already seen that if, if you have a very, very, simple story that people understand that it goes a long way so um as far as functionality yeah that's kind of that's kind of the issue is that you the possibilities are pretty open in how you want to uh to use it and and you know once the fractal capabilities turned on so when uh, talking about reducing prices i think that the the first price of a blockchain of a pbas chain it needs to be expensive because i think we're going to have you know, human scaling problems for the worldwide community if we don't do that. And and so I think it needs to be expensive, but I actually believe that is a price that when we release the next release after this gets to mainnet, the release where you don't necessarily need notaries um, and there's a little more, uh, like, understanding in the world of what the system is then i think that's when we also release that release should be fractal which means that you know a company say if coca-cola you know just like people realized they needed a website 
says we need our PBAS chain and you know and they make a PBAS chain they could literally have a thousand different blockchains internally in Coca-Cola that all different groups run that they use you know but they probably won't have that much volume of transactions to even run no matter what they do in their entire business but they could do you know all sorts of workflow legal firms all sorts of stuff because they could just run all this infrastructure on the PCs they already have everybody in their com in their company running and it's all just free it all just runs you know they don't need servers they don't need amazon they don't need azure they don't need any of that for any of their blockchain database kinds of things <laughs> <laughs> will Varus bridge to nanobiological computers? I'm sure it will one day. <laughs> I'm sure it will one day. <laughs> we all are. <laughs> so. <laughs> Anyways, um, I probably should drop off fairly soon and get back to the code. And I, I actually want to thank everybody for making me laugh and smile today because I've been a little tired this morning. And so it's kind of, it's a little bit energizing. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Ask any question. Oh, uh, the okay. So um, the... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll wait. To, yes, that's the answer, Bishop. Thank you. <laughs> Did you know that the first .dot net uh, project actually the first? So um, I'll just tell a little quick story, just a short one, hopefully. When I was um, so I started the uh, Common Language Runtime Group, which was the precursor to .dot net, and then I wrote this paper. Describe actually in that paper, by the way, I this was I wrote it in 1998 as a Think Week paper for Bill Gates, and in that paper, I actually I did. I would love to get a copy of that paper. I don't, don't have it, but I did actually describe a, a model for using a hash and signature based system for money that would be the ability for people to actually transmit money around, but it wasn't a blockchain. And, uh, and anyways, um, the, the, uh, yeah, ask, <laughs> um, the project when we, so when we, uh, were going around Microsoft, we had, you know, basically we were like, as they say, and I'm not, if anyone is the redheaded stepchild here, I'm sorry, I don't mean to in insult you, but we were like the redheaded stepchild, you know, Bill Gates hated us. Everybody hated us because we were like, you know, isn't that Java? Like, like you guys are making a virtual machine. Isn't that that horrible enemy Java? You know, well, I also happened to have run the Microsoft Java team, but anyways, um, so there was a group responsible for Internet Information Server. That was Microsoft's uh, web server. A group responsible for Microsoft's Message Queue Server. A group responsible for um, Microsoft Com, and a couple other groups. And 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 seven of us product unit managers, which is what I was at the time, got together and decided that Microsoft was going the wrong direction. And we needed to change, we needed to take things into our own hands and be rebels and, uh, and make this group without permission. And it's like, okay, so who's going to be in charge? And it was, nobody wanted the job. Uh, there was a guy, Jay Allard, who you might have heard, he started Xbox. And, and he was also a product unit man. And we all... Like, and he was the one guy who was not opposed to being in charge of the group. And so we basically said that he will be our general manager and we'll all be the product unit managers. And there actually were set, there were eight of us total. So, so uh, 
somehow one thing led to another and he ended up um, dying his hair white. And, uh, and then we were like for a little while known as Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Um, and they called me sleepy because I never slept. Uh, but we wrote a document. We, w we went on this, you know, manager, like bonding thing that we made up ourselves. And, and we um, wrote a document, an internal document, Platform Rebels of Microsoft Unite. And we basically laid out net across all of these different groups and we reorganized ourselves into a group and we called the group project 42 and we took over building 42 just a little something about the meaning of life that was about 42 hmm Yeah, I didn't spend time in building seven. Okay, I didn't. I, I, I don't know. I don't even know if I have my Project 42 t-shirt anymore. I think I gave it to a friend of mine, an Italian friend of mine who was very obsessed with the number 42. I think I ended up giving it to him as a gift. Oh, um, I, I just think you can, uh, Satinder, I just think you can use a, like a browser plugin and uh, an IPFS. I don't actually think that's a hard problem to solve at all. I don't, I don't think we need any name service. What's, I mean, the, Veris ID is a worldwide, completely scalable name service. We don't need a name service. We don't need another. It already exists and it works great and you don't need to even call the network to look it up if your blockchain is in sync and it's provable you can't do dns spoofing like why would you need to i don't understand yes true you could call it dns but it's blockchain I mean, but but the point is that I don't understand when you say, can I do dig? I don't understand that question. Oh, dig command. No. And you will be able to when all those people figure out that this is another system and we're not going to like follow them around to try and pull our system down to make it like, I can't tell you how many years I spent talking to people who built, who helped build DNS in Microsoft about why it isn't the system that we should end up having at the end. It's just, it, it, it's been really good while it's, it's like, I don't understand why we would need the bridge as you're describing i'm not I'm, I'm happy to try and understand but i don't i don't understand why that matters uh bishop yeah so the new wallet actually michael toot jr has done and, and I, I think, I don't know if Maisie was involved because he's often involved in the designs and stuff. Um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue on this other Bishop question first and then get back to that. Um, the uh, new wallet has a screen, which is so, I've, I've wanted this for a while. It's just a screen and it's got, let me, let me, um, hey, Michael, I mean, it's coming out as soon as we can get all this ready. It's coming out. Um, Michael, are you okay to share that screen on the... Right, all bits. And I'll get, I'll get back to that in a second. 
Um, because, because basically the way to do that is going to be the light mode network and you'll, you can use the provability on a light mode network to actually pretty much prove everything. But yes, understand. And yes, that's the browser extension that I'm talking about. And yes, light mode servers will be like um, DNS servers, but being a DNS server is just as simple as being a node, and it will be non-spoofable. But yes, I'm, I, uh, Michael, my question, uh, Michael Toot Jr., are you there? Yeah, Amir, I told you I can uh, share the screen. And also, uh, Max did design this screen, so credit to Yeah, I thought maybe he did. Because it's just, I love it. I, I mean, and I, yeah, so if you want to drop that um, into maybe. To Tindra, um, I, I'm going to focus on coding. If some, right now, I'm going to focus on coding because I can't go looking it up because I know that you can do plugins for like, look at what um, uh, Unstoppable Domains did. Look at, look at like plugin Bravewood or any Chrome browser should allow you to make a plugin to do that, really. But I got, um, but I'd be happy to talk about it as soon as we get this test net out more. Uh, so Michael Toot Jr., if you would want to, I don't know if we should share that. I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't share it on the uh, marketing channel, do you? I mean, there's so many things. Maybe it would just overshadow all the other. Okay, good. No, it's fine. So Bishop, take a look at that screen. And you won't need to actually deactivate. and re It'll do all that stuff for you. It's just so cool. I love it. <laughs> Me too. So anyways, thank you, Maisie. Thank you, Michael Toot Jr. Awesome. I love it. There's a lot, there's a ton of other stuff as well. Uh, Sadikov, no, the, the, um, as soon as we get the test net, the, fo the focus is going to be getting the test net to main net. And once that's out, IDs are basically theft proof. And as far as a withdrawal password, um, Michael Toot Jr., uh, you know, is that an option? I mean, that might be a feature that could be interesting to have people have to enter the password if they do a send or something as an option in settings. That'd be nice. Uh, it could right now protect against someone that had access to your computer and got on the GUI wallet, but if but it wouldn't be real protection, right? Settings, right. If, yeah, they could go into settings and access the client terminal. And, it, and, and it's not working. going to be in the client anytime soon because that would be in, like, we already have an actual theft proof feature, basically. I should say virtually theft proof, so people think I'm not hyping. And, you know, but we also, we already have this feature on the way, which is going to be um, really solving the problem completely, I think. And, and I think that, um, you know, anything that we do in the daemon right now for something like that would be an exercise in making sure that we didn't leave any holes for a feature like that, as well as something that any developer could work around. That wouldn't be easy necessarily to get it on someone's computer. And then also um, it would take time away for it would it would be in direct you know, critical path to everything else we're doing. So I think we're probably going to have that capability to protect all your funds that way once we get this next release to mainnet. And that will apply to all your funds, like, uh, you know, Bitcoin you send over, Ethereum. Oh, and that reminds me of the other question, will Ethereum be on testnet when it's first released? So, um, it won't be on the. It won't be immediately available to Rinkby, but I think we're probably going to like not this coming week. I'm guessing 
you know, I, I think someone's actually on the call who hasn't been officially announced as someone who's working on that. And I have an estimation of what I think it is, but I think just rather than trying to say, I, I think it's going to be basically most, there's not going to be much work at all to do in the demon. I know that most of the solidity work is done. Um, I know that there will be some work in between to still finish up. Um, and so, you know, I'm looking forward and hoping that we'll see it within a week of the test net release live on test net for rink B. But I don't want to make someone who's on the call nervous. And obviously my estimates lately haven't been as good as they have been in the past. So it's coming and people are working on it and there's, and it's going well. I don't know exactly when test net will come will become, you know, live with a rink B connection. But when, once that happens, it's almost a certainty that that is the same connection that we will be using on main net with very minor modifications. Yeah, thank you, everyone. I think I'm probably going to need to get back to code. Um, and really appreciate all the interest. So, thank you, um, Lynn. The so now, you know, we we have to finish, and and once we once so the current protocol right now is something that a developer could look at, and you know because that's what's been happening on the Ethereum side. A developer can look at and understand enough to bridge to the system. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Um, but uh, right now, you'd have to understand. It's basically UTXO. Uh, it looks like a UTXO model. And the interface kind of assumes some things that don't require a UTXO model. But, um, you know, they require some modifications to make it similar to a UTXO when you look at it from the Veris side. And so, um, so I think that the prerequisite once the API is released is just that uh, somebody knows, you know, somebody's a fairly decent developer and they know their own system and they know how proofs work and how signatures work. And if they want to add a new protocol that is not similar to either Bitcoin proofs or um, Verus proofs or um, Ethereum proofs, then they probably would need to get a pull request in for the kind of proof they use. So that's probably it. And and that they won't be able to do that probably until, you know, at least test net. Um, I mean, well, that's not true. If someone's really working on it, like if they're really doing a bridge seriously, they could be working on it now. People are. So um, thank you, everybody. So thanks again. Uh, I think I'll drop off and, and get back to work. And you'll have it soon now. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Mike. Bye. Boom. Okay, uh, Russell, 